I'm going to be talking a little bit today about um, what I would like to see us doing uh, to improve the media experience, the home media experience and so on. Uh, I'm Arun, you can find me on social media as Rehu, and on IRC as what we click, uh, clearly um, a sci-fi channel. Um, yes, so I work on GStreamer and Golf Audio. I work on this in my free time, and I do consulting around these, so I can work more on this in my free time, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm here from Bangalore, India, and that's enough about me. Uh, so what we do, so what I'm going to do is first I want to talk a little bit about uh, the world we live in and you know how people uh, use their media today. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about uh, sort of where we are in terms of the Chrome stack and uh, what we provide right now. And then I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we can be doing. Right? Um, so this is a sort of aside. Uh, we often talk about, when you're talking about like other media in terms of like, providing a service or writing software, we talk about things in terms of uh, content and consumers. And I feel like it's a little dehumanizing and um, abstract you away from the actual thing that, uh, that you're building and that you're trying to do. So I, uh, it, I think it helps to think about this more in terms of media. So um, audio, video, however people um, sort of represent um, either you know TV series or photos of moments in their lives, music that they really like or that they make. Uh, it helps to think of that and then how they like to experience it. Um, just sort of a sidetrack talk on this. But uh, when we're talking about media and uh, how people uh, want to experience it and um, in terms of how they want to do this at home, in terms of the technology, what, we're not, what we often talk about is where is that media? Uh, where we want to uh, either play it or view it or whatever, and how we get it from here to there. So the sort of um, first use case that uh, that sort of a lot of enthusiasts would uh, probably uh, want is something like a home media center with all your totally legal fair use backups of your DVD bits and uh, and you know like music and photos etc. And you probably want to take that and um, make it available. Say you have a TV and uh, your friends come home and you want to show them your application photos like that. Um, you, so you want to be able to basically take it from there and show it over here. And uh, sort of the standard way to do that is VLNA. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's, that's an industry uh, consortium made set of protocols. It stands for Visual Living Network Alliance. Um, and basically it's just a set of specs that uh, sort of define different sorts of devices. So you have media servers, uh, which have uh, all your media media renderers, which can basically play uh, whatever you have on media server, and media controllers that allow you to but control how this thing, uh, how media from your server uh, turns up on your internet. So that's uh, one thing. So a lot of TVs uh, that you might buy do support the LNA out of the box, and you get uh, sort of appliances that you can plug in hard disks to and just make things available on your home network. And that's typically how uh, people use this. The uh, other side of this is you may have a bunch of media on a phone or a tablet, like, you know, again, videos or photos that you might have taken, and you want to make those available either on a TV or another laptop uh, or a tablet or whatever. And again, this the DLMA specification doesn't really differentiate between these use cases. Anything can be a media server, anything can render media, anything can be a controller. So the form factor doesn't really uh, play much of a role in this. And again, uh, DLM is one way to do it. Another way to do it is uh, often TV manufacturers uh, have an app that you can put on your phone, et cetera, and use that to share media with it. Um, and those things are usually quite horrible and clunky and not worth using. Um, the other way that people uh, use media at home is, um, so you might, have, you might just have um, so again, the same use cases before, you've got a bunch of photos on your phone that you want to show your friends, and you want to show them on your TV. So the, you could do this DLNA thing where you browse on your TV uh, with your TV manufacturer's horrible UI. Or you could just take your phone screen and say, hey, I just want to mirror this on my TV, and then you can use the much friendlier interface that you're used to. 
Um, so there's AirPlay if you're using Apple devices, there's Google Cast if you've got a Chromecast and you can just hook that up to your Creative TV. There's wireless display slash MediaCast, which is uh, basically HDMI over wireless in some sense. It's like a remote display for your, uh, for your uh, mobile device. There's a bunch of TVs and a bunch of phones support it. Uh, so that's that's another way in which uh, people do use um, media, use media from various devices on other devices at home, uh, and of course then they're streaming from the internet. So if you want to watch Netflix or Hulu or whatever else, um, again it's all these devices like whether it's um, your Apple TV or Google Cast, whatever, make it fairly easy to say, okay, this is the thing I want to watch. It's maybe I pick it on my phone and say play this on my TV, right? And that's again uh, something people by and large are used to just doing right now. And it's a similar story for music. So you want uh, music either from the internet, Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, or you've got uh, music on your computer and you want to play it on speakers that are connected to your, to your house or home Wi-Fi. Um, there's a bunch of ways to do it. Sonos is kind of the um, a de facto good solution because it just works. Um, there's AirPlay again if you're in an Apple ecosystem, and Google Cast has multi has uh, this ability to stream. You, you can just get a Google uh, Cast audio, hook it up to your speakers, and you have a wireless speaker. The LMA also supports this. Uh, a speaker can be a real LMA renderer. Uh, again, the the UI for doing these things is really horrible with the LMA, uh, but it's there. And sort of uh, the next step in this is of course multi-room audio. So you want Maybe multiple speakers in one room, or you want like speakers in your living room and speakers in your kitchen, and you want to be able to maybe play the same stream uh, in both places, or you want to play some music in your living room, some in your kitchen. Uh, and these are relatively easy to do these days, especially with these uh, smart speakers uh, that various companies have, right? So you can just put a bunch of them at home, and on your phone you can say, hey, like these are all the devices in my house, and I want to play something here or something else there, or maybe the same thing in two different places. So that's that's kind of roughly how uh, how things are often done uh, as as far as I've seen today, and uh, it's kind of in chronological order of what is common. So the media center setup used to be something that uh, was kind of your only choice if you wanted to want a decent home media setup, um, and it is not that uh, fun to have to set up anyone you have to set it up and things like. Google Cast or Sonos make it much easier to just get a little bit of hardware, keep it where you want in your house, set it up in five minutes, and then everything just works. So that's that's the use cases. Um, so let's talk about what we have in the Chrome stack today. So for DLNA, uh, we have uh, GUPNP, which is our UPNP slash DLNA stack, and Rigel is a media server, and uh, a bunch of people have worked on it over the years, including Zisha Meredith around here, and uh, and Jens, who is the current maintainer of this. If I don't know if he's here, but if you see him, buy him a beer because this is really thankless work, and he's pretty much the only one holding the fort right now. Um, so even with with the LNA, we have two sides. We have the media sharing side and uh, the, the where how we actually view the media. On the sharing side, um, this is this is a screenshot from. The GNOME settings panel. Uh, it's actually really elegantly done. I think it's something that we should be proud of in the GNOME uh, ecosystem for getting this, in my opinion, actually very nicely done. You basically say, I want to share either videos, music, or, uh, or pictures, and from my XCG directories, you can say which networks you want to share it on. So you're not just sharing all your media on every uh, Wi Fi network you connect to, which is also important. So, and that actually works quite well. Uh, for the browsing and viewing, you right now, for example, videos, you go to Totem uh, Chrome Videos, and under Channels, all your UPnP devices on the network turn up, and you can open, you can browse through uh, and search for the media you want and play it. Uh, we don't have anything that I'm aware of for screencasting like you do with Google Cast and AirPlay. Uh, for sending audio over the network to your devices at home, uh, we have Pulse Audio, which kind of does. Some of this, um, we can expose uh, pulse audio devices over DLNA uh, if you want to fiddle with things a little bit. Uh, it's a bit clunky to set up. Um, 
That's one. So, and then you can just browse on some, on say your TV and say, um, play everything that I'm playing to support some device on my laptop and you'll actually turn up on your TV. That's, that's one option. Uh, we do have um, the ability to automatically discover all devices on the network that have also you're running and then play music to them. Uh, so that's another thing that needs a little bit of fiddling to work, but it's there. All of this sends out audio uh, uncompressed over the network, so if you're on Wi-Fi, you will not have a pleasant time. Um, and of course, we don't actually do any multi-room at this point. So broadly, that's where we are. Those are the, those are the pieces we have. Um, and as you can see, so if you, if you look at the use cases, right? So the DLNA use cases we're doing fairly well. Out. So whether it's media on your on your mobile phone or media on our media server, we have a reasonable story for uh, for sharing it and things like that. Um, for for the screencasting and audio streaming things, um, I would say we're not even close to that. So what do we need to get? Um, so DLNA, as I said, we've we've kind of got the DLNA stack in good shape. Um, there are still things, like it's hard for everyone to send Jens a TV every night if something doesn't work. So we need help with interoperability. So if something doesn't work, it would be nice to uh, get some help over there. Uh, the UPnP and DLNA specifications do get updated. Uh, so there's some work that can be done to do UPnP2 support and things like that. But broadly we're okay. Uh, on the server side at least. In terms of uh, what things look like in Totem, for example, if you want to browse uh, through your media, and I think Rhythmbox used to have UPnP support, I haven't seen that in a while, or maybe that works. But it's certainly not very friendly to get to. I don't know how many people already knew that uh, have ever used Totem with UPnP. Has anybody? Other than the person who wrote it? <laughs> uh, but yes. Uh, but but it, it does work, but I think it could be more discoverable. Um, it sometimes, depending on the quality of your Wi-Fi, uh, there isn't immediate feedback that we're waiting to listen to the device, so you don't know what's happening. So there is room to make things better over there. Um, screencast, what we can do. Uh, so the, the pieces have been kind of coming together for a while now. Uh, we have a view of what exactly is on your screen uh, via the compositor. So Gnome Shell actually has a handle on this is what is on the screen right now. Um, when it's been working on you know slash pipewire, which will actually expose that as a source uh, that GStreamer can consume and encode and then provide as a stream that we can expose via Rigel using the LNA. So this should this should this shouldn't be too hard to do actually because um, all of that is that all the pieces are there. Um, Rigel actually allows you to say to add sources. Uh, dynamically, that's how the video is in So you could literally have something that says, here's the source of video from your screen. Uh, and you could literally browse for this on uh, on your DLNA device and say, you have to stream my laptop's display to my TV. Uh, so that's one thing we could be doing. For audio tasks, uh, things are a little more complex. Uh, what we have right now in Pulse Audio uh, is actually, um, so I, I, I spoke about uh, the, the DLNA support we have in Pulse Audio. We also support AirPlay in Pulse Audio. It used to work and then it broke when the AirPlay protocol uh, was updated. Uh, the next version of Pulse Audio will support AirPlay to the uh, uh, RAOP2 as a protocol. It kind of works, but honestly, that's not something that, that I think will not belong in Pulse Audio. Like, so Pulse Audio should do one thing well, which is manage your audio hardware and talk to software that needs to access this hardware. All these additional things like the network stuff, the uh, RTG streaming, um, and AirPlay, etc. I don't think should be in Pulse because that just kind of uh, complicates a lot of things in an entity which I don't think is the one. So uh, we have, and in GStreamer, we have the ability to do a bunch of uh, stuff, including streaming RTG, RTSP, uh, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of attention to uh, synchronization so that you can play, take a stream and play it across devices and have them be synchronized. Uh, so that involves clock synchronization, where there can be some more work to make things stable. Um, and uh, of course, all the RDP and RDSP stuff as well. And uh, something I was working on um, late last year and early this year was a sort of 
a more useful library, uh, which I call GST Sync Server, uh, which basically takes all this stuff that we have in GStreamer and makes it available in an easier way. So if you want to write an application that does uh, network playback, synchronized network playback, uh, this actually allows you to build those sorts of applications for the server and the client. Um, and so with that, you, you should be able to build a multi-room audio system, for example, which on a wired network would be within, like you could get synchronization within a few hundred microseconds. And even on a wireless, you'd be like maybe five to 10 milliseconds, right? which is not too bad if you want to do uh, multi-room audio, and I think we can get better. Um, so going forwards from what I was talking about with, um, with Pulse Audio doing a bunch of things that I think it should be doing, uh, and what we were talking about with the screencasting, we actually need an entity that can manage these things, that can say, okay, these are the streams, uh, or, but the, for the media we have this done already, so Rachel shares our media over DLM, but if you want to say, take local media, which means like my screen or the, or the audio output, or maybe both together, and you want to share it to say, either Apple, Apple TV devices, or Google Cast, or something else, I think we need a separate entity to be managing that. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to airplay for uh, audio and video, uh, that's definitely not going to go into Pulse Audio. So there's, we need a central place to be able to do these sorts of things. Uh, so maybe we need a sharing daemon. And so I think, I think uh, that would allow us to do a bunch of stuff, including the screencasting. Um, and of course, that's, that's the sending out the media from uh, your laptop or tablet or whatever. The other side is that you want to be able to send it out to the devices that are hooked up to your TV or uh, speakers or whatever. So that's Apple TV, Google Glass, I don't know if Amazon has something on their Fire Stick thing, but that too. Uh, but th that is restricted in some sense. So there's, for example, if you try to just stream audio from your phone to a Google Cast uh, speaker, with the, with the display still on your phone, you'll actually not get any sync because the protocol isn't smart enough to say, hey, the speakers are gonna be playing this out in like 80 milliseconds, so hold the video for a bit so that the two can be in sync. You, you don't have the ability to control things like that. So what might be nice is taking all these pieces that we have and putting it, so for example, as, a, as an initial idea, if, imagine if you could take a Raspberry Pi and hook it up to your TV or your, or your speaker with, uh, with, with some image that we're able to provide uh, on an SD card. And you just boot it up, and uh, then from your laptop, you're able to say, hey, okay, there seem to be devices on this network um, assign some sort of role to it. So maybe this is my living room speaker, or uh, this is my TV, or this is my kitchen speaker. And it just gets set up automatically, and you have the ability to do uh, wireless multi room audio or cast your screen to this TV or whatever. All of this is something that we could not with, with uh, not much difficulty uh, build with the software we have right now, and um, and I think there is an opportunity to to get into a space over there where uh, we're not able to offer anything that our users actually uh, would want. If so, if you wanted to get people who basically run Android phones, Apple phones, whatever, with with all these sort of common devices at home. We really have no way to uh, say, hey, you could use this other thing instead. So having something like that, I think, uh, would be great. So, so basically, I mean, the the main my main motivation for this talk was was this, right? Basically, that I mean, if we're if we're trying to get uh, GNOME into the hands of users who are not us, right? Users who don't who want to be able to use, uh, they can be able to do the things that they enjoy which includes watching what it, like being able to uh, say, hey, this video that's on my backup, I just want to watch it on my TV instead. Um, and it, we don't actually have a way to do any of these things right now. And it's not, well, I'm probably going to regret this if we ever try to do this, but it's probably not that hard. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we do have all the pieces to do this. Uh, and, and I know that they do work, right? So we've, we've got, we, it's, um, well, if, if we're able to put them together, I think we would have a compelling story uh, for people. So that is actually all I have. Um, any questions?
uh, there are two different parts to to what we could do. There's the the, the client side, and there's the server side. Uh, that's connecting GNOME. That's uh, a GNOME machine connected to a renderer, a TV, a speaker, and there's your laptop running GNOME and being able to use uh, devices that are already available, uh, usually pretty cheaply. Um, I've already started working on a library uh, that I intend to use first in Totem and then, well, in GNOME videos um, and uh, expand upon that, you know, later on for other applications uh, to be able to render directly on a TV. That means you're playing a video on your laptop, you've, you know, browse your collection, uh, you want to watch this and be able to click a button and say, show this on my TV. So uh, I've already started working on AirPlay video support and uh, DLNA uh, support as well. Uh, most of the problems that I had were in the uh, the libraries underneath and in the tooling for DLNA, for example. Right now, it's fairly complicated to to even set things up to be able to send the stream out. Uh, and I think that's somewhere where having something that's uh, a bit more competent than, you know, a uh, half-written unfinished library, like a sharing D, that would be, that would be great. Um, Fairly certain that people would be glad to uh, to be able to uh, to enhance and, and add support for different uh, different protocols and and th there are plenty of plenty of different devices that we need to be able to uh, interact with. If we manage to get just one device supported, I think that the support for the rest of the different protocols and devices will just it will come. Uh, because you can see that there is an endpoint. Uh, so my question would be, when are you writing the code so I can use it? <laughs> see, I, I did say this in dreaming about a uh, for me too. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you agree that we need this thing at least. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure when and how we'll be able to get to the point of having this thing. But at least if, you're, if we, we agree that this entity needs to exist, then um, it's just figuring out what kind of, like what it would need to provide. And maybe as a very simple first step, it just needs to be like, hey, here's a URI, um, or even if here's a file, just make it available as over RTSP, for example, which, which then you can just give to uh, a DLNA thing and say, hey, play this thing, or over HTTP. Whatever. So just having so maybe the first step is just to be like what is what would we need out of this thing as an API, and then tacking that together. I mean, it's something that uh, we could look at, and I mean, possibly I could start. Yeah, if we have a better idea. Yeah, which is one of the reasons I studied this as a library to be only used inside an application, and then probably try to expand upon that because most of the API that you offer, you could probably make it available over dbus mm -hmm. yeah. and then it becomes you know available to all the applications right. yeah. so yeah how will you get done is a different question all right thanks that was a really uh, helpful uh, sur survey of all of the options available uh, I was really excited by the the idea of kind of a uh, appliance style uh, thing that uses uh, our stack. Um, not least because for us at, at Endless, we you know our, for our customers, like when you were talking about all of these use cases, it's about taking your media to the biggest screen you have, to the best speakers, and for the people that um, that use our GNOME stuff, the PC is actually the biggest screen they have and everything. So, like actually consuming things from your phone onto here which is sort of the inverse of a lot of the use cases we've talked about is something that we're super interested in. And, um, uh, and, and working on that would be really, really great as well. <laughs> so, uh, so having that just working or sort of as part of the, um, as part of the use cases that we're thinking about is, is really cool. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry about the lack of uh, wireless display stuff. The number of failed projects I've been working on in the, over the years to try and make wide eye work. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, I think that. 
Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> So, any other questions? So, there's one protocol or means of sharing uh, audio at the very least, and and possibly video in some cases that you haven't touched upon. Bluetooth. Oh yeah. Uh, so the thing with Bluetooth um, is, of course, for for audio, you don't have an advantage to do lossless. So at some point you're losing out on uh, fidelity potentially. Um, then there's range, which is also often a problem. Um, and I, I, are you aware of anything that allows to do video? Like, is that something that's coming up? Uh, to do video, a um, <laughs> number of years ago, I was given by uh, I was offered hardware by a company. Um, there, there are specifications in Bluetooth. To do video uh, is the exact same protocol as doing audio. Uh, the only difference being that you're transmitting. Y you do uh, a little bit of uh, negotiation with the uh, the other end, and if it's got a screen, then you send the uh, the video as well as the audio. So there is something uh, in terms of range and speed. It's probably mostly a a problem with the stack underneath in Linux in particular because uh, you can Bluetooth can actually piggyback on Wi-Fi to send uh, to send uh, heavier files. So that's uh, that's in Bluetooth three, the HS bit of the specification where you can where you can say. Uh, you, you just use Bluetooth to do the initial negotiation and then you tell the machine how to discover the other one over Wi-Fi and then you use the Wi-Fi chip, which is usually the same one, to, to actually send the data. So uh, longer range and, uh, and more bandwidth, obviously. So this is something that's possible, is just that there are a number of layers and a number of uh, bits that would need to be written until we can get to that point. But I think that for, uh, at the very least for receiving data, that might be an option, if very supporting the devices that we're interested in, in, in supporting. It's just one more thing. Maybe, you know, GNOME to GNOME could be super easy uh, using Bluetooth. That's an interesting option. Sorry? Uh, for audio, yes, it does. For video, not at all. Right, even with the audio, like if you look at what you support, you just support SBC in both audio. So something that's come up recently again on the portfolio you doing is can we support AAC and MP3 and other things, um, which I have better ideas for now than I had in the past. So maybe we get that. Any others? So I think that's all. Thank you.